We're speaking today with Anne-Marie Venn, a lifelong St. Albert resident and teacher whose family roots in the community go very deep, all the way to 1898. Ms. Venn comes from a tradition of teaching in this area. In addition to her teaching junior and senior levels, her parents taught in this area for many years as well. We are truly fortunate to have Ms. Venn with us here today. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Colby. I'm interested in learning about what education was like in St. Albert when you were a student. What did your classroom look like? When I started school in grade one, I started at the Brick School. And there were only four classrooms in the school, two upstairs and two downstairs. In each classroom, you had a cloakroom, which was behind the main um, blackboard. And in that cloakroom, you also had uh, a little container for water because there was no running water. Then as I progressed through schools in St. Albert, there was the little white school. Then we went to what was the Percy Page Center. Now I think they call it the incubator, or business incubator. Then for uh, high school in grade 12, uh, we went to what is now Father Jan, and that was St. Albert High. And then after I had graduated, even after I finished teaching here, the new high school was built. Approximately how many people were in one classroom? Probably about 25 would be an average, I would say. When I started teaching in the 1960s, um, it was up closer to 30, 35, and we even reached 40 one year. Was there more than one grade level in the same room? Sometimes, not, not usually, but in the old brick school there was because um, there were only four classrooms for 12 grades. So uh, the primary classes were together and then uh, grade 10, 11, and 12 were in one class. What was a typical day like? When we got there in the morning, the first thing was a prayer, followed usually by O Canada, and then we started the actual school. What are some differences between schools today and when you were a teenager? Children are still children, teachers are still teachers. I think perhaps there was a little bit more respect, and I use that word guardingly. I'm sure students today respect their teachers, I know they do, but there was a little more formal respect, I think, perhaps in those days. Um, you never talked about a teacher by a first name, for example. A teacher wasn't your best friend. Uh, your teacher was Someone who wore a suit and tie, or for the women, a suit, no pantsuits, had to be a skirt. <laughs> and um, there was just a very, uh, I'd say more formal than today. Did you participate in any school activities, sports, or groups? Well, I was a yearbook editor one year for the high school. And so that took up pretty much <laughs> every night after school. I was never good at sports at all. And in fact, when they picked teams, I was sort of always the last one picked. So I learned that I was a very good timekeeper though and I was a very good scorekeeper because I was good in math. So <laughs> whenever anything started, I would volunteer right away to be the scorekeeper. Were school holidays any different when you were in school? They were a little different in that we had a few more holidays. Um, we had what they called Holy Days of Obligation with the church, those were holidays. But when it came to holidays in general, it's very different now because I know my little grandchildren um, they go to Hawaii and they go to Jasper skiing and so on. When we had a holiday, we stayed home, we got to sleep in and we got to play with our friends because in those days we didn't take vacations. It was, uh, it was just a holiday was a day that you stayed at home. What grades did your school go up to and what percentage of them got their high school diploma? The school was always grade one to 12. Um, it was a small percentage that graduated when I was in high school. In, for example, when I was in grade 11, there were 26 of us in the class. By the time I got to grade 12, there were eight, because in those days, if you weren't going to university, there was really no need to go to grade 12. You stopped at the end of grade 11, you were usually about 17, and you went and got a job. Was education important to your family? Very. My mother and father were both teachers, so it was never are you, what are you going to do when you get out of school? It was when you finish school and go to university. <laughs> and that was just the norm in our house. Do you think you'd be a different person today if you attended one of our schools here in St. Albert? Probably I'd know how to use the computer a lot better than I do. <laughs> uh, because then, you know, our, our, our learning was pretty basic. But for being a different person, I don't think so. I, I think there's many things besides education that turn you into the person you become. Was education important to society in general? 
I think it was because many of uh, the parents who were parents in, in that age didn't have a lot of education and they really wanted to see that their, their children got an education. But not always a university education. Um, as I was saying, those leaving in grade 11, many of the girls would go to what was then McTavish Business College and you got um, training to become a secretary. So that was an education, certainly, but it was not necessarily a university or a college education. In what ways did the education you receive help you to pursue your eventual career? Well, I think it was very important. And I had one teacher, for example, in, in high school, um, Sister Cody, and I remember her very well because she was the yearbook advisor, so I worked a lot with her in my grade 11 year. She was a gray nun. She had come from uh, Vancouver. She was born in Vancouver, and she was very well educated. She had a master's degree working on her doctorate, which in those days was quite something. That was back in, in the 50s. And every year she went and she studied more and more. And I think the thing that was so important about her, she had a real rapport with the students. And in those days, um, we had Catholic and Protestant students in the school, and she was equally loved by, by everyone. Her love of learning, I think, gave us all that sense that, you know, there's really something special about learning. It's not just something you have to do, it's something you really want to do, and, and you really want to carry on. And she was really ahead of her time. One thing that always impressed me is that every summer she used to go to the States and go to university and upgrade her education. And I found many, many years later, when I hit 50, I still didn't have my degree because I had stayed at home for many years as a stay-at-home mom. My children were all getting their degrees and I thought, you know, I'm gonna be the only person in this house without a degree. So I went back and I don't think I might have thought of doing it if I hadn't had um, that relationship, if you like, with Sister Cody, who said you can you keep learning until the day you die. Ms. Venn, it was a pleasure meeting with you today, and on behalf of Vincent J. Maloney students, I'd like to thank you very much for helping us understand St. Albert's rich educational history. Thanks, Colby.